Dr. Essel is a composer of both instrumental and electroacoustic music. Uh, he has created many softwares for purposes of creating real-time composition, but as well as some improvisations. He's also an improviser. And I know some of you have seen the little short bio on the posters around the school, so I won't go further. But uh, I'd like to welcome Dr. Essel to the floor, and we'll begin with a couple of student performances of his work. And perhaps if maybe now Dr. Essel would like to talk about the very first work that we're going to hear, which is an improvisation. Yep. Um, uh, thank you so much for having the opportunity to be here in Waterloo for the first time of my life. Uh, I'm here in, in Canada since a week. I started in Montreal with a project there with musicians and we played a concert. And on Friday we have a big thing with the Junction Keyboard Collective, which play uh, a, only keyboard music by me, um, with electronics. And uh, as I was asked to speak about the first piece, uh, the title is More or Less, and it's um, sort of improvisation environment for uh, up to five musicians who are using a computer program that they have on the screen as a note stand, as a music stand. So the computer program generates on the fly playing instructions that the musicians uh, have to fulfill. And each musician is an independent part, so to speak. He plays his own path through the, through the piece. It's a sort of improvisation on given models. But the idea is that the, those musicians listen to each other and connect. Also, they don't know what the other has, which playing instructions the other has. I shortly explain <coughs> the, the type, how this piece works. So, on the first uh, uh, hand, we have uh, five different uh, musical models. Each one consists of five letters. So, the most simple that we have is called the drone. Anybody has, a, has an idea what the drone music, musically could mean? Hands up, please. <laughs> okay, who's first you? Uh, a long sustained note. Uh -huh. um, it could be one note or uh, maybe, maybe two notes, like uh -huh. a, a fifth. Or, okay, um, and an interval. It could be, right. Okay. Or yes, it's, that's, that's very good. So it's something that is long and sustained. I, virtually infinite. It can be uh, very simple, just a note. It can be some it's a more complex uh, interval, or uh, some multiphonics, or a cluster, or a sound process, which is very noisy. There is no pitch information. It, it's just the, the, the shape of the sound. It's, it's sustained, and it's, in a, in a certain way, stable. And then we have something else, which is a sort of um, um, opposite of that. It's called, um, is it called point, or in this piece, or do I, uh, uh, um, uh, burst. 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 Yeah. It's burst, yeah. okay. It's burst. There's always four letters, as you see, burst. So burst can be seen as the sheer opposite of the drone. <laughs> Everything consists of little tiny elements which change the behavior uh, through the path of the process. Uh, it has a certain attitude of explosion, of uh, ex explosivity. Um, okay, then we have something else that is called pulse. So everything that has to do with sort of repetition. The repetition can be even, or it can be irregular, like a rubato, or it can be a sort of rhythm, or something that speeds up and slows down, or it develops. But everything that has a certain way of pulsation behind. Then, as far as I remember, there's something called texture, correct? Or cloud, cloud. 
because I need five five uh, levels, so it's a cloud. Now the question to the collect, uh, collective wisdom gathered here in the room. Uh, if I say clouds, does anybody have has an, a clue what that could mean musically? Have you ever studied music of Xenakis or so? You have an idea what a cloud could be? Um, sort of, I'm thinking sort of like a non-obtrusive cluster of pitches that uh, it lo it's similar to the drone in character and that they just sort of don't go anywhere, but it's just a sort of a... a it just sort of hangs there as a cloud of pitches. That's what I. That's how I interpret mm -hmm. that. Yes, it comes close. So it's it's something that consists uh, of little tiny elements, of, but they form an, a, a bigger entity, mm -hmm. like a cloud, which changes uh, the form. So this can is everything that has a sort of textual uh, appearance, but also changes in time. For example, if I play on the piano a very quick. Uh, random notes within a given range that changes its um, form that could be a cl considered as a cloud or everything that's, that's virtuosic and, 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 and moving in time and space that's considered as a cloud. And what is the last element? Who plays the piece? Shoot. Okay. Shoot. Yeah, shoot. So this is French and it's very good because we are here in Canada, so we are bilingual. <laughs> um, I'm not. I'm not speaking too much French, but this is something that has to do with uh, the falling. So this is a gesture that, that represents falling down in various aspects: falling down the pitch, dynamic intensity, duration, whatever. Everything that has this tendency of it's considered as a jute. Okay, those are the four. Types uh, and every, every musician, every musician has to learn them on his or her instrument. So you can play a drone easily on a violin, but on the piano, it's very difficult, and on the toy piano, maybe impossible. So <laughs> still, you have to find a solution for that. Um, in the end of the of this seminar, we will play you a piece, um, one of my sequitures, on the grand piano where we have a technique of playing drones on the piano, which we will show you afterwards. Um, those, um, I, I speak a little bit about the computer program. Every musician has his own screen, and there runs a program, and whenever you need a new playing instruction, you just press the key, and then it would randomly choose you one of those five uh, models, so to speak. Um, it's a it's a special way a type of random a random which has a memory, so uh, it would not give you the same uh, playing instruction twice. So it always waits until it has you used all the five possible things, and then it would give you another one, so that it pretend, uh, prevents that you uh, play too much of the same type. And now we come to the more interesting <coughs> part. This is the. Um, how, how can I call this? This the, an, uh, a little poem that is also generated by the computer program, which gives you um, a three-liner, a little poem that explains how to interpret these models. So now I would like one of the players to come out and on the computer and and and, and maybe uh, read some of those poems to us. I will. Yeah, like read like Yeah, just uh, press through and read. Yes. Uh, just, just to give you some ideas. The haikus are generated uh, by a generative algorithm that is not uh, a set of uh, pre fabricated uh, three liners that are just randomized. It's really something that's constructed from executive rules out of a, of a, of a database of, of, of words. And the good thing is, it's in English, because English is a language which syntax is relatively simply compared to French or German. Mm -hmm. uh, so this was the only possibility to get this in English. Otherwise, in Chinese or uh, Spanish, it would be very difficult. So um, I would like to ask you for the first uh, haiku. I call it haiku, although it's not really haiku, mm -hmm. but at least at least a three-liner. Um, what does it say, your haiku? Mine says, discover the medium. Discover the medium, OK. 
and it goes together with the playing uh, with the model. What is the name of the model? I have pulse as the playing instruction. Okay, so you have to play pulses and uh, obey those this instruction. Follow the media. Whatever this means. I mean, it can mean at the moment nothing, but in the context when they play together, it would mean a lot. Yeah. So it's it's a sort of uh, riddle that uh, challenges, and the meaning is not so clear. But you have to find something. And this um, I invented because I, as an improviser, I often come to the point where I just repeat myself in, in things that I can do well or I'm used to that. But in order to get a little bit out of tune, uh, I need some provocation from outside. So maybe you uh, tell me your um, wisdom, what you just got now. I have reduced the given source, and it's for cloud. Okay, that's pretty mm -hmm. obvious what it could mean. <laughs> Reduce the given source, okay? And what, what's yours? Uh, my, my instructions drone, and I have influence a better event. <coughs> okay. So these are really great words, I think. Mm -hmm. There's one thing to mention, that I did, what I forget before, forgot before, that uh, the musicians are free to uh, ask for a new playing instructions whenever they wish. Mm -hmm. So there is no system from outside that dictates or suggested something. So if they feel that they would need a new input, they just hit the uh, space on the computer to get some, some new information. Dr. Russell, there's a question from over here. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Um, I was just wondering, it's sort of a two-part question. Um, it's interesting that the musicians don't know what the other musicians' instructions are. Mm -hmm. um, I'm just wondering if you think it would, like if it would take away from the piece if they did know what each other's instructions were, and also if it would take away if the audience was able to see what their the player's instructions were. If you think that would take away from the performance. I didn't understand the question. Taking away what? Uh, um, well, I guess you made the decision with the piece that the musicians can't see each other's yes. instructions, okay. and also that the audience can't yeah. see their instructions. Mm -hmm. So I'm just wondering um, well, why you made that decision, I guess. Well, <coughs> my, my idea is that the <coughs> it's a very good question. <coughs> Each musician is, is a personality by its own and has its own uh, responsibility for things. And on top of this, the three musicians form an entity. So they are more than just the sum of individuals. So the idea is that they create a system that is much more than the individuals. And I think it's good that they don't know what the other have. So they should only listen and, and, re and relate their, their instructions to what the others are playing and relate to this as a musician. It's not a Cajun uh, uh, concept where each musician is completely independent and doing its own thing and should not listen. Here is the contrary. Um, it's very important that they connect to each other. And I think uh, it's projecting those instructions for the audience would only or, or would, would um, put the audience in a, in a situation where they just say, okay, uh, drones, I don't hear drones, and <laughs> Really I think it's good that people are listening and, and experiencing what's, what's happening there in the moment, which is not planned in advance. So there is no formal plan. There is, it just happens at the moment, and we as, as um, observers take part in this process and as, as listeners. And by listening, we construct this music in ourselves. How many, uh, how many different Haikus are there? Um, mm, I cannot um, um, answer this question because... Is it infinite? It's not, not really infinite because it, it's, a, it's a random permutation of okay. given phrases. Uh, but it's quite each, a lot. Right? It's uh, several um, billions, I guess. Yeah, it's, okay. It's <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's infinite. <laughs> it's, 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 so, so, so you know, so in another, what I meant by asking that is you don't know what's coming no. from that. And I never, I never got the same instruction yeah. twice. Yeah, because you can predict those five. This is clear. But you cannot yeah. predict no. the haiku. No. Yeah. No. That's marvelous.